I'm Josh Harder. I'm on the Alert UW Madison team, which is here within academic technology. And specifically, I run a, a team that's called Media Delivery. So the tools we focus on are in this category of well, delivering media to your students. And that's where Kaltura Media Space falls. But I also experiment with tools like Office 365 Video and YouTube and uh, all those good things as well. Uh, so, and I help out a lot in the Alert UW team, just in general. Uh, so this is a lot of the stuff for media space. I shared or will share the slides with, um, with John and Mar uh, Margaret so they can post it to the WordPress site so you can get all this information. I did just actually create an email list. So if you're interested in getting news updates emailed to you, like I just posted that interactive video quizzing, uh, has been enabled and turned on, I am going to, after this, email that announcement to this user list here. So if you go to this URL and log in with your net ID, you can subscribe to the WISC list with your WISC email address. If you would like news and information, also feel free if you're interacting with Kaltura at all today, if you want to provide some feedback, input, it would be cool if it did X, Y, and Z because I have a direct line to Kaltura and the vendors and have good conversations with them and I uh, funnel all that feedback to them and it helps them uh, do things like maybe make interactive video quizzing better or do better features like Margaret was saying earlier and capture space light. So yes, let me know uh, and use the user list to do that. So I thought, we would kick it off. Well, I was going to give you a little bit of an outline. So um, I was going to start out with a video and instruction as the what I did, what I want to do, what failed, what went well, that kind of thing. To kind of kick things off and then have a conversation. I was then going to show you all Capture Space Lite uh, and what it can do. Use the video that I'm creating in Capture Space Lite to make an interactive video quizzing, uh, interactive video quiz, and then highlight this feature called shared repositories that allows you to have a big bucket of media that you can pull stuff from. So like if your department had videos for all their courses, you could uh, use them in various other courses, that kind of thing. So without further ado, I will start up the video here. I'll actually go to media space for it. You know, one of the things that's uh, pretty important to consider when getting into this whole video discussion is uh, how much more can you do with video? I use video in my teaching. If I'm lecturing, I have video clips of things that I want to show them. There are so many possibilities there to enrich what I do in my classroom presentations. It's, it is active learning. I mean, we're going places and we're doing things and we're collecting resources and they're using editing software and they're, they're, they're going away from board running through Blackboard as well. So instead of always coming to me with questions, they you know throw them out there to the class. What I find is that it builds a lot of community in the classroom as well. For me, I'm a visual learner, so watching a video, I get so much more out of it than reading a paper or getting lectured. One of the things we try to do here at UNH is give our faculty pretty much all the tools and support that they need to do any kind of media project. We have a faculty technology group that takes place every summer, and so I kind of privilegedly applied to be included. So I so I went to Fitzy, and over the course of the week, realized that there was a lot of things happening that I didn't really have any idea about. The biggest difference for me was seeing not not just knowing that those things were out there, but seeing how my colleagues were using that in their classrooms. To take something that you've been doing for 15 years and completely change the approach was weird. First of all, I didn't know the technologies, and then second of all, um, learning how to apply that right into my classroom. We learned things like how to use iMovie. We learned a lot of the functionality of a Mac. The class that I used um, video in the most is the freshman composition class, and we call that first year writing. And the nuts and bolts of it um, include writing a personal essay. And then from there, what we did was move into the video project. It was really kind of fun for me because I got to take a passion of mine and not only use it in school for like a, just a general purpose paper, but also have this product that I kind of 
be proud of just from the fact from a Douglas perspective. <laughs> <laughs> so Greg wanted to create a project for my class about Dublin. He used some really great resources to make a video and get permission and do it all ethically so that he could put it on Facebook. Honestly, he put it right on over the course of my academic career and have being able to shake it up a bit and grow, you know, have this video for the first time. It's definitely a nice change of pace. Students are going to have to get the opportunity to not only learn something outside of the standard curriculum, but just in terms of the whole video editing process, but they're also being forced to find a, a different way to do it. And it gives them all the leeway in the world to do it in the way that they want to do it. Other faculty get a lot of great ideas out of this whole thing. Uh, an example there is uh, Catherine Moran uh, teaches sociology and she ended up in one of the summer institutes where we had uh, Crystal Gatton talk about her project and uh, she got ideas around that and she said, hey, why can't, why can't I try that out and nicely for me? Before I started doing video in my class, I was asking my students to do video assignments on their own. I did a lot of writing and basic things that I did. But it was after doing the Faculty Instructional Technology Summer Institute 50 at UNH two years ago in the summer that I saw the possibilities of doing something that incorporates writing and video. So I was inspired by my colleagues at 50 and by the academic technology people here at UNH. And I thought, I'm going to take a risk. It was the first time I did the project. The class submitted their videos in a variety of ways. Many of them gave me thumb drive or gave me um, CDs, DVDs with the, with the product on it. And that was horrible. It was a, a jumble of submission formats and ways that people were trying to get their work made. Now that UNH is using Kaltura and it's integrated with our Blackboard system, students just upload the files to Blackboard. So I create a custom Blackboard for section of Blackboard. And students <laughs> can navigate from Blackboard to the location on their their hard drives or their movie stores and they can upload that. Leanne was in my intro sociology class and did the Wikipedia project. And I then subsequently had her in another class a couple of semesters later. But when it came time at the end of the semester to do their face-to-face -face presentations in front of the class, she chose to make another type of rich media project. Andrew, you are not the semester-long project and I was one of the last people to present and everyone kind of did PowerPoints and it was just wicked boring like you didn't pay attention to anything and I wanted to do something a little bit cooler and she made the video an iMovie and it played behind her while she delivered the presentation to the class. People got to see and hear examples and for me that's something that grabs my attention and makes me want to listen and makes me want to understand and so it really wasn't that much different than asking students to write papers. They have to have a very clear idea in mind of what they're looking at. They need to know what evidence they're going to use to support the point they're trying to make. And then they have to show that. And it's a similar process with using video. And it's really fun because students come in at the end of the semester and they, I get the sense that they feel like they've made an accomplishment. They've done this, this thing that pushed them beyond their comfort zone. I felt like I was the big finale of the presentation because <laughs> I was one of the last people to go. And actually, right as I finished the video, I sat down and the girl who sat next to me all semester didn't say one word, just leaned over and said, that was the greatest presentation I've ever seen. So I just felt awesome. And kids in my class actually still talk about my presentation. So here at UNH, once we got our uh, with the Kura platform integrated with Blackboard, uh, what it really allowed us to do is not worry about details of the technology. And suddenly it sort of opened the floodgates to how people were using media. We're, we're really happy that it worked out this way and it's been seamless and easy for faculty and students to do work with video. I like that just because it has a bunch of successes and failures.